This time on The Spark, two authors, one a bestseller who weaves romantic tales with a sexy edge, the other appeals to the younger set, much younger. That's next on The Spark. The Spark is produced at Riverview Studios, an award-winning digital video production facility, creating programs to help clients motivate, educate, and inform their audiences. Closed captioning provided by Ryan James Agency. Full service in digital advertising. Strategy and creative with gusto. Relentless about results. Find them at ryanjamesagency.com. Stephanie Ivanovich, the niece of the prolific best-selling author Janet Ivanovich, has found her own way to the top of the New York Times bestsellers list. She is the quintessential Jersey girl, a Jersey Shore girl, though we have a lot in common. Her breakout novel, Big Girl Panties, brought together an unlikely pair, a very overweight widow and a gorgeous celebrity personal trainer. And who wouldn't want to read about that romance? I welcome Stephanie Ivanovich. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Marie. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, Big Girl Panties, why don't we start there? At the beginning? I start at the beginning, because as I understand it, that is your first novel. Were you writing short stories before that? You know what? It was more an exercise in keeping creative. I was trying for 30 years on and off uh, in between being a mother to try and make it as an actor, which basically translates to a lot of community theater and sitting around backstage waiting for lines. So uh, I would write a little bit to anyone who's gone or done community theater knows that what's going on backstage is usually 100% better than whatever's being shown <laughs> in front in the audience. So I would, I would practice like that. I think I hear a novel coming um, about yeah. that. <laughs> or at least a sitcom. Yes, when I think sitcoms. of that, I think sitcom. There you go. Yes, uh, yes. And also at the time, email uh, groups were big. And I had joined an email group, believe it or not, about the movie The Patriot with Mel okay, Gibson. Yeah. And back then, now of course, social media is instant you know, okay. in, in real time. But back then you would join these groups and all you did was email each other. So I would kind of uh, hone my skill a little bit writing stories, which I guess would be considered the first fan fictions oh, wow. of the day, because it was the early 200, uh, you know, and early you 2000s. like a lot of um, feedback that, wow, that was great. I did, I yeah. did. Other members of the group would write back and go, oh, that was so good, keep going. Uh, so I generally, I had friends who were writers and I would write with them just to support. And before I knew it, I was working a story. And, and it was Big Girl Panties. It was Big Girl Panties Interesting in the end. Interesting name. Tell me about the title and how you know that came out. I have to be honest. I had something way more pithy and witty. And it was actually my agents who were sort of like, that title's not going to work. And we worked it. And they just kept coming back to Big Girl Panties. And I finally resolved myself to the, you know, I can remember telling my husband, I said, I, I, I think it's going to be Big Girl Panties whether I like it or not, which would set off its own. When I went on tour with my first book and, or would run into friends, people would say, oh, so what'd you write? And I'd be like, Big Girl Panties. <laughs> I'd be trying to say it with a straight face, all serious. I'm serious, literary. Big Girl Panties. What did you have did you have in mind to do? Obviously, you didn't want to do something um, very serious. I mean, there were definitely serious themes in the novel, which I think is what gives it the um, resonance that it has. And it apparently has. It was a bestseller. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think that life in itself is a series of serious uh, trials and challenges that we face. But I definitely wanted the humor to be underlying because humor usually gets people through their toughest times. And I just, that's something I practice in my own life is humor. And yeah, I'm glad that that translated and that you saw that. Absolutely, absolutely. So here you are, you're someone who you said trying to be an actor. It sounds like you were succeeding. I mean, you were doing community theater. Um, <laughs> what did making it as an actor look like in your mind? What? Getting a paycheck. <laughs> That's what making it <laughs> as an would actor would yeah, have yeah, looked I like. I could see where that would I be do remember beneficial. doing at one time a dinner theater where it was like a murder mystery sort of. So it was half scripted, half, you know, improvisation. Oh. 
And I do recall getting a check for $25 and thinking, yeah, I made it. Because I'd heard the definition of anything uh, uh, once you go from amateur to professional is whether or not you got paid. But let's face it, $25 wasn't even getting the gas in my car to go do this thing. Right. So uh, in honesty, I really kind of gave up the acting when I realized I, I hail from as you know the Asbury Park area. And when I found out, like they filmed so many things in Asbury right. Park, okay? Yes. I believe it was when The Wrestler, that movie with Mickey Rourke of came course. out. Yes. That... They had filmed those wrestling scenes in Convention Hall. Oh, I knew when he was walking on the boardwalk with his daughter. Literally, yeah. I live, I probably could have hit Mickey Rourke in the head with a rock <laughs> if I had a good okay. throw from my porch. And I had found out that that movie had filmed in Asbury Park when it came out in theaters. Right. And that's when it sort of started sending the real life message to me that I just don't have the connections to make it as a working actor. And I didn't need to be an ingenue. Like, I wasn't looking to be, uh, you know, Jennifer Addiston or a top, you know, Melissa McCarthy. Right, I just wanted right. to go to a job every day and get paid. And that Doing clearly- Doing something that you obviously love. Right, that was my true passion. So uh, I kind of started giving it up at that point and thought to myself, well, I had tried singing as a youngster, and you, believe me, you don't want to know how that went. <laughs> um, but I realized I did have a name that might get someone to answer the phone in publishing. <laughs> so did you I, always look up to, to Janet Ivanovich? Oh, or you know, growing up, Janet got me. You know, like she was really mm -hmm. the person who sort of was like, you have a life force and sort of wow. encouraged me. Now, of course, she's incredibly busy. So it, she must be incredibly proud. You know what? I, I, really don't know like that's a question for her now it really is when i when i think of what it takes for me to produce a book a year you said she's prolific which means basically she's writing all the time or promoting all the time and um i hope so i'd like to think so i would think so so let's um well, one question, as someone who was so into acting and the community theater, the backstage, it seems to me um, to begin to write that you might have thought of plays or screenplays. Is that something you started with? I, I didn't because I really did like the sexy. You know, let's be honest, sex sells, and that was sort <laughs> of the approach that I took. Um, and that's what I read. I mean, I grew up reading romance novels. Like? much to my mother's chagrin. <laughs> um, I read a lot of Rosemary Rogers. I think I was 14 years old. You, sweet savage love. And... Yeah, The Insiders. Yes. I oh, read, okay. it's funny, I went from reading The Outsiders by Essie Hinton, right. who I loved, and that's yeah, more yeah. a young adult, to The Insiders by Rosemary Rogers, which was graphic to oh, say I the least. I'm not familiar with that one. I remember this series uh, we had with I did read yeah. Sweet Savage Love, and, and, Morgan and blah, blah, blah. she really um, sort of tweaked my interests and at the same time horrified me. I was like, oh my gosh, people actually do this? Because I was still <laughs> only like 14, 15 years old. But that's where I would gravitated. And then I, I read a lot of Catherine Coulter. I liked yes, Catherine yes. Coulter, especially the historical. There was a historical period that I went through and then kind of gravitated to contemporary. Right, right. And I realized contemporary fiction is easier to write because you don't have to do all the research. Yeah, like that, when you write historical, a there's a tremendous amount of research that I didn't think I'd be good at, so I went with contemporary. Can you walk us through the process of when the idea for your first novel, Big Girl Panties, <laughs> came to mind? And again, this has to do with a celebrity, very... We know he's a very, very, very attractive person. Yeah. That comes up a lot in the novel. Was right. there an actor in mind? Was there someone in particular in mind that you were thinking about? When people ask me who I think of when I think yeah. of casting big girl panties, my general response is Channing Tatum ah. for everybody, <laughs> including the women. He can okay. do it. He's that okay, good. He's your man, huh? Um, yeah, Channing Tatum <laughs> right. is pretty much uh, my guy. Uh, what really started it was back in, um, I, I hold a black belt in Taekwondo. I did read that. Yeah. That's fascinating. In 2002, I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, mm. which 
put a, I, I had to stop my martial art because I just couldn't take the pounding and the hitting. And so that is just a, by way of explanation, that kind of arthritis is more of a... Uh, it's like an autoimmune. Right, so right. So okay. it's a lot of your, your uh, white blood cells kind of attacking your joints because they don't know where to fight, you know. Wow. So yeah. uh, I wanted to stop that, but I ended up gravitating towards personal training. And it was funny because I was doing a community theater show with an actor who was a personal trainer and he was very cute, <laughs> I don't need to say. And um, <clears throat> he mentioned to me that if I began weightlifting and building up my muscle, that would protect my joints. So that started me on my journey to personal training. I've had seven personal trainers since then. They were all gorgeous. Not all of them were the right trainer for me, but I had one particular trainer who basically said to me, look, if you were supposed to be Angelina Jolie, that would be your name. Let's make you the best Stephanie possible. And that really just freed me in so many ways. Wow. Mentally, um, I began to view my body as a temple that deserved the best I could give it. And if you did that, whatever happened at the end, you could live with. And it really changed my entire view on life. And I owe that guy a lot, and that's actually who I think of when I started writing about Logan. Wow. Um, yeah, that comes through. There's just this, you know, compassion for all of yeah. your characters. I think that's one of the... My current trainer says that he's Logan, <laughs> but he didn't <laughs> he read the book. Logan. So I'm like, I don't even think you know what you're saying, dude. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, I love the name that you chose for your heroine, Holly Bush. Yeah. And I'm happy to think you were giggling when you wrote that one. I do a lot <laughs> yes. of name play. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm big on the name play. In fact, the, yes. booking, the book I'm working on now does the same thing. And I'm like, you know what? If that's what I get labeled as a name player, then I can. Let's talk about what that. you're working on now because I could talk to you about big girl panties for sure. the rest of our dwindling time together. Sure. But so you're, as you mentioned, you're doing a book a year. That's what, what they're looking for. What does that mean to you, and where do you find your material, and, and how that is that That means I think out? about writing all the time, yes. basically. If I'm not promoting a, a book, then I'm writing one. Um, I'm still learning. I try to be gentle with myself, um, but it's I, I'm not out of stories. I think I have I have another three. I have this one and another two to write where for HarperCollins. Where do you find that? You know what, it's no, my, the book I'm working on now is a martial arts story with a younger man theme because I don't, I, I want to try to fight the battle of becoming formulaic. Absolutely. Yeah. I think after a while you just don't have a choice. There's only so many ideas out there. But the one I'm working on now is a martial artist who, um, and a mom. Martial a mom who, yeah. A mom. Is it sexy like all your. <laughs> Yeah, I can't yeah, stop. Yeah. But you know what? It, you know what's really nice is that when I first wrote Big Girl Panties, I thought it, it, it was all about the sex. And my publisher, HarperCollins, was, is so supportive that they've encouraged me to, it doesn't need to be about that. You are allowed to tell a story, and we believe you tell a good one. So... Um, Go ahead Go and put it. it in there. <laughs> That's so wonderful, but it, Stephanie. Don't feel afraid to tell the story because you really tell a, a good story. And that is the kind of support that... It's got to be a great feeling. You know what? It really is. Stephanie, thank you so, so much. Next up, a college professor who drew creative inspiration from a very irritated dog. Dog.